Every summer, my family and I travel across the world, 3,000 miles away, to the culturally diverse country of India. Now, India is a country infamous for its scorching heat and humidity. For me, the only relief from this heat is to drink plenty of water. Now, while in India, my parents always remind me to only drink boiled or bottled water. Because unlike in America, where I can just open on the tap and get clean, potable drinking water, in India, the water is often contaminated. So my family was always careful to make sure that the water we drank was safe. However, I soon realized that not everyone was fortunate enough to have the clean water we did. See, outside my grandparents' house, in the busy streets of India, I could see people standing in long lines under the hot sun to fill these buckets with tap water. I even saw children who looked the same age as me, filling up these clear plastic bottles with dirty water from streams on the roadside. Watching these kids forced to drink water, I thought was too dirty to touch changed my perspective of the world. This unacceptable social injustice compelled me to find a solution to the world's water problem. So I wanted to learn why these kids lacked water, a substance that is essential for life. And I learned that we are facing a global water crisis. While this may seem surprising, as three-fourths of our planet is covered in water, only 2.5% of that is fresh water, and less than 1% of that is available for human consumption. Due to rising population, industrial development, and economic growth, our demand for this fresh water is increasing, yet the world's water resources are rapidly depleting. According to the World Health Organization, 780 million people in the world lack access to a clean water source. Countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia are especially vulnerable given their arid environments. Lack of access to clean water and sanitation kills children at the same rate as six jumbo jet crashes every day. And UNICEF estimates that that's 3,000 children. So in eighth grade, when I started investigating the global water crisis, I wanted to use my passion for science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, to help find a solution. So I converted my garage into my laboratory. Actually, at first, I had converted my kitchen into my laboratory, but my parents didn't really approve. I also started reading a lot of journal papers on past water-related research, and I learned that currently in many developing countries, solar water disinfection, or SOTUS, has been used as a means of purifying water. Now, SOTUS is very energy efficient because it only uses solar energy for water purification. Basically, these clear plastic bottles are filled with the contaminated water and exposed to sunlight for six to eight hours. The DNA of the harmful pathogens is destroyed by the powerful UV radiation coming from the sun. Now, while the SOTUS process is easy to use and requires little cost, it's often very slow. So since the SOTUS process is slow, a new technology called photocatalytic solar disinfection has been used to accelerate the SOTUS process. So what is photocatalysis? Well, photo means using the sun, and a catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. So what photocatalysis is doing is speeding up the solar disinfection process. But there are several disadvantages to the current photocatalytic solar disinfection methods. You see, traditionally, the photocatalyst is coated on the inside of the plastic bottle. And these photocatalysts are actually commonly used in sunscreens to block UV radiation. So when they're coated on the inside of bottles, they're actually blocking some of the UV radiation and diminishing the efficiency of the process. Also, these coatings aren't tightly bound to the plastic bottle. So they wash off into the water, which means people end up drinking the photocatalyst. 
So I wanted to overcome these disadvantages of current treatment methods and create a safe, sustainable, fast, and cost-effective means of purifying water. So I developed my pervious photocatalytic composite for water purification. My composite combines filtration with photocatalysis. First, the water percolates through the composite filter, which destroys 98% of coliform bacteria. Then this water can be exposed to sunlight for 100% coliform inactivation in just 15 minutes. Now, organics are another common contaminant of drinking water with severe health concerns. So I used an organic indicator dye called methylene blue, which turns from blue to clear when degraded to show that my composite also degrades organics. And unlike traditional photocatalytic solar disinfection methods, which only use UV radiation, or 3% of solar radiation reaching the Earth, my composite also uses visible light, which is 44% of solar radiation reaching the Earth. So in the future, I hope to deploy my composite in places where water is scarce. Now, for the past three years, I have been focusing my energy on finding a better way to purify water and raising awareness for the global water crisis. But our world still faces numerous challenges. According to the National Academy of Engineering, we must overcome 14 grand challenges in order to better our society in the coming century. Some of these include making solar energy more economical, providing energy from fusion, of course, providing access to clean drinking water, and even creating a virtual reality. So in order to overcome these challenges, I think it's imperative that more and more young students get involved in pursuing their interests in science, technology, engineering, and math. STEM and STEM education are vital to building a better future. But many are discouraged from pursuing their interests in STEM. You see, when asked to envision a scientist, the common stereotype most kids K through 12 think of is of a guy with a white lab coat, disheveled hair, big glasses, and a bunch of colorful beakers giving out big clouds of smoke. As for adults, the majority view scientists as aloof, secluded, and recluse workaholics. But you see, these stereotypes and reality are actually poles apart. A scientist isn't someone who slaves away in an isolated laboratory. A scientist is someone who loves learning and gaining a better understanding of the world. When I started my research, I didn't have access to a sophisticated lab or any high-tech equipment. Instead, I started building my prototype water purification system in my makeshift garage laboratory. And in this age of the internet which we live in, I realized I had access to an unlimited amount of information at my fingertips. Of course, I'm not saying that this research has been easy, but the point I'm trying to make is that I didn't let my age or lack of fancy lab deter me from pursuing interests in scientific research and from following my passion of solving the global water crisis. See, science isn't just plugging numbers into, into equations or just reading from textbooks. Science is fascinating. Science is awe-inspiring, and science has the power to revolutionize the world. Students need to understand that age shouldn't be a barrier when it comes to pursuing interests in scientific research. You see, they say that as kids, we have so much potential and that the future is in the hands of our youth. But what I've learned from pursuing interests in scientific research and speaking with other students who are passionate about solving global problems is that it's not just the future. Students can start to make a difference now. So even after all this, my journey still continues because I strongly believe that access to clean water should not just be a privilege. Water isn't just the universal solvent. Water is a universal human right. This water injustice faced by one-ninth of our population is a correctable one. 
I know that while I alone can't solve this massive problem, that by coming together and working towards the same goal of clean drinking water for all, the possibilities are endless. So now I'd like to end by saying that you don't have to be a genius in order to help tackle global problems. Just as Albert Einstein said, you only have to be passionately curious. And perhaps one of you could be solving a global problem in our world. Thank you.